Hey everyone, how's it going? You all ready for DreamFest? All right, I'm Denise Perez. I'm gonna hear, talk to you about how we're building state-of-the-art RAG LLMs today. And if you love this session, if you hate it, we appreciate the feedback, so scan the QR code and have a coffee on us. And I'm sure by this point, if you've attended any sessions, you've seen this over and over again. But especially for this session, what you're going to learn about today is our latest research. Literally launched it yesterday. So definitely don't make any purchasing decisions based off of this session. And again, thank you for taking the time to come to this session. We really appreciate it. So thanks to our customers, our employees, and our partners. Uh, my name is Anise Perez again. I'm a senior product marketing manager at the AI research team. And I'm here with Fee, who's one of our brilliant researchers. So you'll hear some great stuff from him in just a second here. Now, before I jump into the actual LLM for RAG, let's talk a little bit about our team, what we do here. So our AI research team does an array of things, but the heart of it is really the research. And with the research, we have a series of different things we do. We've got papers, patterns, models, such as our SFR RAG model, which is open source today. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But what's incredible is that the research we have here, it's not just open source or a paper. We take it, we bring it into incubation. So you might have heard Mark mention our collaboration with Kaiser today. That's an example of how we take our models, we bring it into incubation, we test it, we fine tune it. As we improve that, we can then scale and take it to production into our actual Einstein product line. Again, so today we're going to talk a little bit about SFR RAG and potentially how it can then go into product. Now, any Marvel fans out here? Any Avengers fans? I see a few hands, OK. We won't have you answer the question just yet, but let's have RAG pull that on here. So, RAG's going to show us just very high level how RAG's going to give us the, question, the answer to that question. We're going to start with our query. So where was Avengers Endgame filmed? Next, we're going to do some knowledge extraction. And what that really means is we're going to search in whatever type of data you have, whether it's data cloud or whether it's on the web. And we're going to pull that knowledge, sometimes in form of articles. So we've got the different movies here. After, we're going to rank this information that we have. So, Endgame, for those Marvel fans out there, that's movie number four. We're going to rank that at the top. After we rank that, we're going to ground our prompt, and then we're going to get the LLM response. So this last piece here is what we're going to talk about today, which is super important. The RAG piece is great, but how we actually generate this response here is what we're here to talk about. And as you see here, for anyone guess Atlanta, Georgia? Super random, probably not. <laughs> So we're going to get that with our LLM response in a user-friendly way. So why does this matter? Why do RAG, contextual, small LLMs even matter, right? One, as we know, our AI, it's only as good as the data that you're training it on. And we have dynamic data that's changing all the time, whether it's minutes, dailies, or even sooner than a second. It's important that we can keep up with that. And secondly, we want to factually ground our knowledge. So especially in an enterprise setting, Whatever we're putting out to the customers, we want to make sure that's factual and it's accurate, not hallucinating. And then last, this last one's a little unique and specialized here for Salesforce. I know we see a lot of big language models in the industry. We focus on small LLMs. And the reason for small LLMs is because we have to scale, right? There's a lot of data, a lot of customers, and we want efficient um, solutions that are cost efficient as well, but that can also be sustainable, which is one of our values here and even lower carbon emissions. So we're doing all this great stuff, but there's still some challenges that we're seeing in our research team today. And to really summarize at high level, one is limited knowledge base. As we're doing some of these Q&A or other type of RAG functions, we're seeing that there's limited knowledge base, and we have to find a way to give the users a personalized right answer um, but oftentimes, we also see hallucinations, right? And hallucinations just means that it's making up an answer, giving the false. It might not sound like a big deal if we're answering what's, where was Avengers filmed. That might not be something detrimental. But in an enterprise setting, especially if you think about finance, healthcare, other industries, that could mean uh, that could be detrimental to a business, right? And then last, efficiency. 
again, as mentioned, we want to scale. There's a lot of data, a lot of different functions that we have to do, and we want to make sure that we're able to scale that. Now, that was a high-level intro, but for the good stuff, help me welcome Fee, one of our brilliant researchers on stage. All right. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah. That was awesome. All right. So today, I'm going to talk about how we build SFRA. So SFRA is a large language model that is built for many applications. That can be from question answering, information extractions, summarization, or you can use it as a conversational agent with some function calling abilities. Mm -hmm. We built into SFRA many values, but we, I, I would like to highlight two important aspects. The first is it is small in size. It is smaller than competitive closed source or proprietary models, and because we care about efficiency. In fact, our models are even smaller than many state-of-the-art models that are 10 times bigger. Secondly, we care about performance. So SFRA achieves very high performance and state-of-the-art results in terms of accuracy in RAC applications, and it's outperformed many competitors. But beyond that, I would like to also build it so that it would be easier for you as developers to build Rack application out of it. That's why I would like to talk about the chat format. So if you have tried out any AI assistant, you will be familiar with two roles. The first is a user, and the second is the assistant. So as Dennis and I was talking about Avengers, we are also curious about what is the nationality of the Avengers Endgame director. So I will ask our AI assistant to do that. And as you may expect, our AI assistant will first do many steps to get to the final answer. The first step is to go into the internet and search for the words Avengers 4, and that is querying a search engine. And it will receive some results from the internet, for example, more details about the directors or information about the movie. Then. The model will have to reason about the results and then perform another query, another search for more details about the directors, which is Russell Brothers. And then finally, the model will consolidate all the results and then come up with the final answer, which is American. But this is, as this is a standard chat format, it may come with some limitations. For example, as you can see, all the assistant results are returned to the user, which can cause some security concerns. For example, these many data processing steps may interact with some internal database or sensitive information that you want to hide from the user so you don't want people to see. That can cause privacy issues or security issues. Secondly, the user interface may not look very good because the assistant terms res results are very cumbersome. Or, and sometimes the user only wants to know the final answer without knowing all those internal processing steps. And lastly, it may impact the reliability of your model because when you have to extract many steps from the assistant turns, it will be very unreliable because the model may not always produce the right step that you expect. And you have to catch a lot of errors or using a lot of text parsings that can fail in real time. So, my team and I was thinking about this, and we come up with a very simple and wonderful solution. That is to introduce two additional roles in the chat format, and that is thought and observation. And we believe that this small change will help your life as a developer easier because it will save you a lot of tedious work trying to process the text that the model produces. So thought is basically anything that the model can talk to itself freely. It can do certain reasoning or perform actions, perform functions. And thoughts are not expected to be shown to the end users, even though you can always choose to do that. To do that. Observations, on the other hand, is to store any external information that is retrieved from the, the external knowledge uh, database or a search engine. So let's see how thoughts and observation play in actions. Now we bring up the same question and processing steps. Uh, as before, you still have those steps, but now all the model outputs, such as reasonings, thoughts, actions, callings, will be stored in the thought terms. 
and any external information that is, that is retrieved from the internet or any external source will be stored in observations. And now they are separated from the assistant turns. In this way, the assistant turns can focus on its absolute goal, which is to de deliver a wonderful and beautiful response to the user that is on point and accurate. But there's more than that. In this way, because of the separations of the steps, you have total control about how to show or how to process the data. For example, if you believe that the internal processing step are sensitive or contain any you know, internal information, you may hide them all together and showing a processing icon like this and only uh, returns the final result. Or you may choose to show those thoughts and observation because you want to demonstrate to your users that your answer is factually grounded. So this will help your applications preserve security and privacy. It also maybe looks better in terms of user interface because now the assistant terms don't have to worry about all those steps and can be focused on delivering a wonderful response to the user that is accurate. And of course, because of the separations of the steps, you don't have to do any textual parsing, text formatting, or any tedious work to process the data that the model produce and to obtain. So that will improve the reliability and the easier to implement aspects of RAC application. But beyond that, making the model uh, easier to build does not improve the accuracy of the model. And your model may still give the wrong answer. That's why I would like to talk a little bit about instruction fine tuning, which is the way we build the model to be more accurate. So let's bring up another example. Anybody is like soccer? Yeah. All right, seems a lot of, a lot of, the, of you. Anybody knows the, the answer to these questions? Which country won the 2022 World Cup? Oh, wait, oh. anyone? France. OK, <laughs> OK. Argentina. OK, let's see how, if that's correct. I'll go, I'm going to talk, about, talk to our AI assistant to get the answer. And as you may expect from Iraq applications, the model will try to pull many documents from the internet. And, and you can see there are multiple related documents like the 2018, 2022, and 2014 World Cups. And from the look of these documents, are you able to tell the answer from this? Well, of course, the tags are so small. <laughs> but the, the idea we want to talk about is there are too many distracting informations that can cause confusions and making the model to give the wrong answer. So for example, the model may choose to produce the answer, for example, in Germany. However, that is the wrong answer. <laughs> the answer is actually Argentina. And we call wrong answers hallucinations. And this is a very big area of research in RAC applications and large language model in general. So to improve on this, we try to make the models to train on a lot of distractor examples. For example, if you want to just get good at math, you will practice a lot of math, question, math questions. So much so that when you go to the exam, you, you see a question that you've never seen before, but you still know to answer the question because you practice that type of question so many times. And we do the same for the large language model. We introduce to the model a very large amount of data that is similar to the real world scenarios in RAC applications. We show them the input, which is the question and the answer, and try to make the model memorize, understand, and reasons about why the models need to, answer, to produce the answer that is accurate. In this case, for example, it is Argentina. We also train the model on many topics, from popular sports or financials, report, et cetera, so that we make the model more universal. And in an another step further, for example, if, it's, if you are teaching a bunch of students uh, who keep making wrong answers or keep making mistakes, you want to uh, penalize the, uh, the, those students. Not so much, not so hard, but <laughs> penalize them. Uh, and show them that, hey, why this is the wrong answer. And also, if the students are giving the right answer, you will reward them, encourage them, and so on. And we try to make the model better by doing the same thing. In this way, we call that preference learning. So in preference learning, 
we get the model to produce right and wrong answers, and then we, we will train the model so that it will encourage the model to give the right answer and discourage the model if it, it is giving the wrong answer. So that's how we build the model to make better and more accurate answers. So after so much learning, after so much practicing, less time to put the model to the test. And we develop a new uh, evaluation benchmark called Contextual Bench, which focuses on REC application question answering tasks. And we are able to show us that our models are better than many alternatives and competitors. So uh, that's we sum up SFRX. Uh, we introduce SFRX as a small but powerful model that is easier to build a REC application on because of a new chat format. And it is uh, public, and you, you, I hope you guys enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's welcome back Dennis. Thank you, Fee. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Fee. So this is all great stuff that we learned. And I'm sure at some point, walking around Dreamforce, you've learned about Agent Force. Agent Force is a system of different agents. So we're taking these AI assistants and now making them more autonomous personalized and proactive where they're able and willing to do actions for you. Um, so this research that we're learning about today, as mentioned in that slide you saw earlier, is eventually going to move into products and potentially into these agent force applications. So SFR RAG, that LLM can be used in a data cloud context, service cloud today. So I'm sure you might have checked out other sessions. And it can definitely be used in a service application, such as the Kaiser Permanente example I gave earlier, where we're trying to do question answering, different knowledge retrieval for patient and providers. That's just one that came off the top of my head. But there are many more um, in service and data cloud as well, where it can help uh, get the right factual information. Uh, our AI research team has about 17, 18 different sessions. Almost every single one is on an entirely different topic. Uh, if you like today's, we've got a lot more like it, some more on the incubation side, some on the product side. I encourage you to check some of these out. Uh, I, one, I, I'll flag a couple here. We've got one uh, with the Permanente group tomorrow. If you see, it's the second one on day three. And this is talking about some of the knowledge retrieval rag things we're doing with Kaiser today. And last, if you want to check out our SFR RAG, we actually just released a blog yesterday, and it's open source today as well. So feel free to scan this, go to our blog page, and within the blog, you'll find more information, and you can also try it out for yourself. Thanks, everyone. Okay.